Okay, here we go again. Another JBL Professional. This one is the uh, amplified, dual amplified speaker, I should say. Let's get it turned around here. LSR 2300 series. And this one is the LSR 2325P. I believe this is the twin to the speaker that I repaired. Well, it's been a couple years ago right now. So let's go ahead and fire this thing up and see what it does. Okay, so I do have an audio signal going into it. And I think this little indicator is supposed to light up blue on the front of it when I power it up. So let's go ahead and hit the power button. Make sure I have the switch on in the back. Oh, great, and it's gonna work. Well, we'll let it run for a while and see if it decides to die out. No distortion at low volume. Okay, well, I'm just gonna set it aside and let it run for a while and see what happens. Okay, so I spoke to the customer about this unit and he said, go ahead and just take it apart, do a quick look-see, check some caps, see if you see anything out of order. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Now let's see if this thing will cooperate and come apart easily. Probably have to add a bit of prying apparatus to it to possibly get it to separate. There it goes. All right, well, that's about all the farther I can get it open. Let's flip it over on its side here. And we'll go ahead and get some cables disconnected here. I suspect that's the power transformer. Probably an indicator LED. And then something's definitely been running hot in here. Look at those connectors. I don't know if you can see them on the camera. But yeah, they have been running very hot. Okay, so here's a look at the inside of this unit and take a look at all that black. At first I thought that was gonna be the yellow glue that turns conductive and acidic as it heats up, but I don't think that's gonna be the case in this case. Now I see some thread lock over here, red around the screws, and I see more of that black glue. It's probably just a celastic to keep these parts from vibrating. If I do have to change any of these, they will be going back with RTV silicone that does not change color as time progresses and has not become conductive. A little more black right there. And then it's gonna be kind of hard to see because there's the subwoofer port right there, but up underneath here are the two power amplifier ICs. And it might be kind of hard to make it out, but they are TDA 7294s. Two of them, one for the low frequency and one for the high frequency. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and unmount the board completely. And we'll just go ahead and check every capacitor in this unit, including the two main filter caps right there in the center of your screen, C3 and C4. Interesting, they put a little bypass ceramic cap across them, it looks like, just to remove any high frequency component. And it looks like there is a standby bridge rectifier, and then there are the two regulators that I've had problems with in the past on these units. But I didn't show you this, but as I lower the voltage down to about 90 volts, it really starts to buzz. And it's more of a square wave buzz, so I'm thinking one of these caps is definitely defective. And that's the problem he was complaining about a buzz, especially when cold. I didn't witness this. I've run this thing for several hours. 
with no issues whatsoever. So let's go ahead and get the board out of this unit and we'll go ahead and use the blue ESR meter and we'll check every single capacitor and see what state they're in. Okay, let's ESR some caps on this board right now. First, I'm gonna verify that we have 0.0, .0 when I short the leads together, and we do. We'll start with the 470 microfarad input filter caps for the regulators. And I see 0.95 ohms on that one, a little bit high for me. And 1.3 on that one, a little bit high once again. Now the hundreds, I'd like to see about a quarter ohm on these, and I see 0.55 on that one and one ohm on that one. So we're gonna definitely wanna replace all four of those caps. Now we'll check all the power amplifier caps as well. So these are one microfarad caps, a couple ohms is fine. That one's 12, a little bit high. 7.2, a little bit closer. Like to see probably two or three ohms on those. This is a 10 microfarad cap. Four ohms, just a hair high in my book. These are 47s at 50, very good, 0 0.03, 0 0.04, perfectly fine with that. And once again, 0 0.04, 0 0.05, good on that one. This one is a one, and I see 40 ohms, that one is definitely bad. This is another 47 at 50. 0 0.04, 0 0.05, 0 0.06, perfectly happy with that. Another 47 at 50, 0 0.03, perfectly happy. A 10 at 50, 4.8 ohms, just a hair high for my liking, and a 1 at 50. And it does not even read. That one is definitely bad. These two, least but not last, possibly, open and open. These are one microfarad caps, leads are still good. Yeah, definitely bad. Well, we've got a few caps to change. I'm gonna contact the customer and see if he just wants a complete cap replacement on this board. It's not gonna be that bad, 16 caps. And I'd like to go ahead and just replace these two regulator ICs just to be safe, uh, the replacements I have are on semiconductor, much better quality regulators than I'm sure what's in there. They have some China cons. So I do have a 7815 and it's kind of hard to see, but a 7915 as well. Let's go ahead and check the two main filter caps. Now these are 5600 at 35 volt caps. Maybe two tenths of an ohm on these would be acceptable. Oh, and I see 0 0.00, 0 0.01, perfectly fine. And once again, 0 0.00, 0 0.01. I'm very good with that. So gonna contact the customer and see if he wants to proceed with the repair, changing all six caps in each channel plus the four caps down here in the regulator stage. So here are the ESR of the old capacitors that are still on the board versus the new capacitors that I'm going to install. So the old capacitor value is up on top. The new capacitor value is on the bottom. So as you can see, the 100's at 25, the old ones read one ohm, the new ones read 0 0.19, 0 0.55, 0 0.19. The 470's at 35, which are the input filter caps, 1.3, the new ones are 0 0.09 ohms, which is a much closer value that I'd like to see. 0.92, for the old 0 0.09, for the new, and then on to the power amplifier stage. The ones at 50 on, this is the high frequency amplifier. 7.4 on the old ones, 5.1 on the new one, 12 ohms on the old 5.1 on the new ones. Now these 47s at 50, it looks like the new caps have a higher ESR than the old caps but these are actually in parallel with the main filter caps right here to provide bypass right at the amplifier IC. So as you can see, the 10 at 50, red 4.1, the new one is 0.64. Now the old one read 0.03, which is the same value as the main filter cap that we read. 
The new one is 0.11. I think those are going to be much higher once you pull them out of the circuit. Same thing on this one, 0 0.04 and 0 0.11. The one at 50 read 4 ohms. Excuse me. The one at 50 read 40 ohms. The new one is 5.1. These are 47s at 50. These are the bypass caps that are mounted as close as practical to the power output IC to keep oscillation at a minimum which is why you see 0 0.04 on the old ones and a higher ESR on the new ones. I doubt that's going to stand true once we pull the caps out of the board once again. 10 at 50, 4.7. The new one is 0.64. 1 at 50, 1 at 50, 1 at 50. Open, open, open. And the replacements are 5.1 ohms. So I'm just going to go ahead, like I said, contact the customer, see if he wants these things replaced, and we will move forward from here. Okay, so I did get the okay from the customer to go ahead and replace every capacitor in this unit, with the exception of the two main filter caps that test absolutely perfectly, in addition to replacing both the 7815 15 volt positive regulator and the 7915 15 volt negative regulator. So we'll go ahead and change every cap. Now, I did make a couple of mistakes when I was ESRing these caps. I thought both of these were ones at 50. This one is a 10 at 16. This one is a one at 50. And then on the other side, this one is a one at 50. This one is a 10 at 16, but all the other capacitor values are correct. I did double check them. So let's go ahead and zip all these caps off the board, install new ones, and we'll do the same thing they did. We'll just run a bead of silicone RTV across the top of all these to secure them to the board like you've seen me do before. And we'll put this thing back together and hopefully everything will be just fine. Okay, well there is the board minus all the capacitors with the exception of the main filter caps that tested absolutely perfect. Although I'm not happy about the Chang or Chong brand as it may be, but they tested great. I've not had problems with those caps. Only the small ones tested bad. So next step, let's go ahead and install a bunch of capacitors, solder them down to the board, install new regulators, power this thing up, All right, all the capacitors have been changed. Both regulators, positive and negative, have been replaced. So let's go ahead and mount this thing back up, fire it up and let it run for a while and see how it does. Okay, I like that. 
Everything should be secured very well with non-conductive silicone RTV. So that old conductive grease. I'll probably go ahead and scrape this off right there before I remount it. I don't think there's going to be an issue with the main filter caps down here. This kind of glue really does not become conductive. But we got that new silicone RTV on there. We'll let it cure for a little bit and put this thing back together. Okay, well, I think that'll be good. I think the RTV is going to hold those screws in as good as the thread lock. Definitely got enough heat sink compound over there. Might wipe some of that off, but yep, let's go ahead and let this thing dry a few minutes. Fire this thing up and see what happens. Okay, so I'm measuring the temperature right here of the two regulator ICs. What is that up there? 145 degrees. I think that's a resistor. Anyhow, down here at the regulator ICs, we are running 140 degrees and 133 degrees. So I'm thinking that's probably gonna be just fine. I'm thinking we may not actually have to add any heat sink into it because it's holding steady right at 140. Kind of jumping around 139, 140, 141, and the other one is holding pretty steady at 133. Now I do have some electrical tape on the back of these regulators as in the last one of these I did because electrical tape has a higher emissivity of 0.95 which is what the camera wants to read. So we're holding pretty steady at 140 right there. So let's go ahead and take the tape off and see what we get. Okay, tape is off. And see, now we're only reading 134, and of course the metal has a very, very low emissivity range. So the, the black tape actually lets you read things better with an infrared camera. So I think we're gonna be just fine. Well, so I'm just looking down in here at these regulators, and it's got a couple resistors down in here that spread out some of the heat they absorb some of the energy so the regulators don't have to do it all and so we're seeing 147 on that one I'll try to get the spot over here where you can see it a little bit better and 134 one, 137 on that one now the resistor is warm and then up in here that resistor that you saw is 162 that's perfectly fine you can actually see the op amps up in here they really bias these things on they are definitely getting much warmer than i would like to see 145 degrees but that's the way jbl designed these things to get nice and warm i wonder if i can actually see the output ic's up here somewhere oh they're running nice and cool There they are in about the 90 degree range. Not too shabby at all. But anyhow, there it is. The JBL up and repaired once again, working absolutely perfectly. Well, I'll just leave you with this infrared view while I do the outro. I certainly hope you enjoyed the video on the JBL LSR 2325P. This is the linear spat spatula, is that what it is? Reference bilinear amplified monitor. Go ahead and leave me a question, a comment, a concern down below, good or bad. I try to respond to the comments when I have time. 
while you're down there, hit that subscribe button and like this video. It does really help my channel grow. I really do appreciate it. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at NorCal715. You can email me, NorCal715videos at gmail.com. That is the best way to contact me. Please be patient. I have a full-time job and I do these repairs in my spare time. Remember, with your help, we can try to keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. Everyone have a great day. Thank you so much for watching once again. I really do appreciate it. Bye-bye.